Hi, I'm Lisa Bronner, and today we're going green with a tour of our Pure Castile Bar Soap production here at the Dr. Bronner's headquarters in Vista, California. I'm standing here in the lobby where my grandfather, Dr. Bronner, greets visitors with his signature peppermint Castile soap. My grandpa founded the company in 1948, and since then we have done a lot of work on many fronts. The first soap my grandfather made was the liquid Castile, peppermint to be exact. He didn't start making bar soap until three decades later. And what was the first bar scent he made? Lavender. The soap making principles are the same for liquid and bar soap. You react oils with a strong alkali, but the two require very different machinery. In a previous video, I toured the liquid soap production, a much simpler process. Check it out on my YouTube channel or website. Bar soap is more complicated. You put liquids in, but you get solids out. Bar soap is made in two stages. First, the bar soap base is made, and then it goes through the finishing line. Ah, here's my ride to the beginning of our bar soap tour. This is Dr. Bronner's magic school bus, driven by our very own Ms. Frizzle, Cassidy Jones. Bar soap base production starts here at tank 35, which contains a blend of coconut, palm, and olive oils. Years ago, we committed to sourcing our major ingredients from not only organic, but also fair trade operations. The hiccup was that organic and fair trade suppliers for coconut and palm oil did not exist. So we founded our own. It is possible to grow these ingredients well. I think whoever named these components must have watched a lot of superhero movies. This here is the turbo disperser, which pulls in the oils from outside and mixes them with the alkali, sodium hydroxide, or lye, and salt water. Then the mixture travels into the tubular reactor, a two-story tall component that is at the center of the bar soap based production. This is where the magic happens and the oils become soap in a process called saponification. When the soap is finished, it emerges from the reactor and travels along these pipes. Now the mixture is ready to be dried. It goes into this vacuum chamber where the moisture is sucked out as vapor and then into the cyclone separator where any little bits of soap in that vapor are pulled out. The vapor is then condensed back into water and treated in our on-site water treatment for reuse. The now soft solid soap is forced through this honeycomb screen and cut into noodles. This is where we find Richard Jones, our master bar soap base maker. Despite all the complicated machinery and calculations, there is still a place for personal judgment and artistry. Richard, you examine every batch of noodles that comes out here. What is it that you're looking for? So typically, when we're looking at the noodle, we're looking for good color, good texture, smell. And before we send it to the lab for final analysis, we, do, we can do a little quick test so we know there's alkalinity in the noodle at this point. So how's this batch looking? Very good. All right. Very good. Finally, the finished noodles are vacuumed up by the pneumatic bag filler and into these super sacks weighing 1,800 pounds each. What takes a home soap maker six months, we get done in 30 to 45 minutes. The noodles will sit in the super sacks for 10 to 14 days to cure. Time for phase two of bar soap production, finishing the bars and packaging them up. The base for every bar soap is exactly the same. This would make unscented soap. It's in the finishing that the essential oil gets added. The bar soap finishing starts here at the super sack loading station, where the super sacks are hoisted into one of four positions and then emptied onto a conveyor belt. A vacuum sucks the noodles off the conveyor and flies them up high to the first hopper. These small tanks dispense the essential oils. We use so much peppermint oil that it gets a tank all to itself, and all the other essential oils have to take their turn on this one. In this first mill, the noodles and the essential oils are mixed for about 20 seconds. Then the soap drops down into the second milling stage, where two opposing worm drives force the soap through a screen like this and another honeycomb plate where it is scraped off. This screen filters and provides smooth texture to the soap. Then the soap drops into its third milling stage where it is pushed through another screen and then finally through this slug plate right here where it forms one long continuous bar of soap. Now it's off to the cutter where a blade chops it into a seven bar length. Check out how strong I am. Next 
is a stamper, which stamps seven bars at a time. I love watching this machine. This machine can stamp 300 bars a minute. The excess soap from the stamping, called flash, as well as any rejected bars are collected and sent back up to Hopper One for a do-over. There's no waste here. And then it's off to the wrapper, where they get lock coated and wrapped in a double layer, an inner stiffener to protect the bar, and an outer wrapper. I could really use this device to help me with my gift wrapping. A heater activates the adhesive and the bars are sealed. The case packer pushes them into cases of 12 or 72, and a roller skate conveyor whisks them off to be sealed and palleted. Let's meet our bar soap line lead, Pasquale Tomas, and our production supervisor, Todd Bowden. What scent are you running today? Right now, we are currently running rose. And how many bars of soap do you think will come through today? Uh, today, we have a few fragrance changeovers, so we ran a baby earlier, we're just about to wrap up rose, and we're gonna switch over to citrus, so realistically, we can expect to do about 50 to 60,000 bars. Now, what if you had no changeovers? What's the maximum you could run? On a large production run with no fragrance changeovers, we can do upwards of 100,000 bars. That's a lot of soap. How about for this year, right? November 17th? How many bars of soap do you think that you put through this this year? So this year we estimate our um, amount is 8 million bars. That's a lot of clean people. Thank you so much for your work. Thanks for joining me for this tour of Bar Soap Production. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel and I'll see you the next time we go green. All one.